There's no escaping the amount of space that those who are being difficult and getting in the way of the project of rebuilding and building these walls and putting the gates in place uh, are given in the book of Nehemiah. Uh, and now in chapter 4, earlier murmurs of opposition to the work of building uh, now escalates into something much more serious. Let me read some verses from chapter 4, uh, the first 14 verses, uh, a longer reading today. Now when Sinbalat heard that we were building the wall, he was angry and greatly enraged, and he jeered at the Jews. And he said in the presence of his brothers and of the army of Samaria, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore it for themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they finish in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish and burned ones at that? Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him and he said, yes, what are they building? If a fox goes up in it, he'll break down the stone wall. Hear, O our God, for we are despised. Turn back their taunt on their own heads and give them up to be plundered in a land where they are captives. Do not cover their guilt and let not their sin be blotted out from your sight, for they have provoked you to anger in the presence of the builders. So we built the wall, and all the wall was joined together to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. But when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabs and the Ammonites and the Ashadites heard that the repairing of the wall of Jerusalem was going forward, and that the breaches were beginning to be closed, they were very angry. And they all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to cause confusion in it. And we prayed to our God and set a guard as a protection against them day and night. In Judah, it was said, the strength of those who bear the burdens is failing. There is too much rubble. By ourselves, we will not be able to rebuild the wall. And our enemies said, they will not know or see till we come among them and kill them and stop the work. At that time, the Jews who lived near them came from all directions and said to us ten times, you must return to us. So in the lowest parts of the space behind the wall, in open places, I stationed the people by their clans with their swords, their spears and their bows. And I looked and arose and said to the nobles and to the officials and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives and your homes. Now as they get on here with the task of rebuilding and of building these walls, the workers back then in Jerusalem were not immune from discouragement. You see that in verse 10. Neither are they immune from fear. We see that in verse 11. Neither are they immune from feeling vulnerable. We see that in verse 12. We too, none of us, as we seek to live out our lives for God in today's world with all of the challenges and even in today's church with all of the challenges. None of us are immune from feelings of fear, feelings of discouragement, or even feeling vulnerable. We need to learn from such times. We need to grow in our trust for Christ in those times. Sambalat was motivated by political views and his own need of power. Sometimes that can even be something that is a tactic of the enemy in today's world and in our own province and even in our church today. For Tobiah, it's religious pride. So he's happy to, to join in the opposition. Political and religious prejudice multiplied then and they can multiply today and they can get in the way of humbly serving God, humbly seeking the welfare of his church, and humbly loving friend and foe alike, and humbly reaching towards all with the grace and kindness of the gospel. 
Their undermining leads to discouragement, it leads to fear, and it leads to apprehension. But Nehemiah strengthens himself in God, and he is filled and renewed and restored with compassion. The church today needs men and women who are full of God's Spirit. And when filled with his Spirit, we will be filled with compassion for the needs of all and for the needs of any. I would like in this little devotion today to encourage particularly vestries and Sunday school teachers and youth workers and clergy to keep on building, to keep on keeping on in the strength that God gives because God wants a strong church, a healthy church, and a growing church. We read in verse 6, So we built the wall, and all the wall was joined together to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. The collect, that's the set collect for today, as so often fits in so well with the challenge and with the theme of these verses. Let us pray. Almighty God, who sees that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I want to encourage you as we close today to take a moment and to say to the Lord, Lord, put upon me your armour. Gird me with your strength. Keep me faithful to your call. And enable me, Lord, with courage and with boldness to humbly do the works of God. The power of his spirit in obedience to his word and for his glory. Amen.